What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and in today's video, we're switching things up again, going back to more of a hardware topic. Today we're talking all about the mini panel from Blackmagic Design. When I was originally looking to buy the mini panel or the micro panel for that matter, I couldn't really find a whole lot of videos breaking it down and explaining all the functionalities and the way it would improve one's workflow. So today I've decided to go ahead and jump in, show you all the buttons. It's not gonna be the most in-depth review video, but if you wanna see more uh, in the future, just let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get to that. Ever wonder how to turn your SDR grade to HDR in addition to that, this free webinar includes proper workflow to using Hollywood's most used film print emulation, custom techniques to stress testing your LUTs, future proof LUTs for HDR and ASUS workflows, learn to balance your footage in seconds with printer lights, secrets to building an HDR ready note tree, prepping Dolby Vision trim for Netflix, pro tip when saving a power grade. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. Now you know what to do if you're enjoying the content. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. And with that, let's roll the intro. All right, let's jump right into it, guys. Got a pretty interesting camera setup today. Uh, just kind of overhead. I am pushed back away from the panel. I usually prefer to be directly over it and close to it so I can just quickly get everywhere. So I might have to be reaching here. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Um, one thing I want to start off by saying is that the bottom half of the mini panel is almost identical to the micro panel. The exception is that you have the palm rest here. The mini panel uh, extends a little bit further below the track balls and the wheels. So you have a little place to rest your palms. That is not the case on the micro panel. It's a little bit shortened, but everything else is the same. Same buttons, same functionality and everything. Uh, you just don't have this upper half and then you don't have the palm rest. You can usually find them a little bit cheaper if you can find them secondhand, either on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. Usually this MSRP is around 3000 and you can find it for around 2,500 used. Now I'm gonna start off going through everything that the micro panel has, which is from here down. And we're just gonna kind of read this like a book. We're gonna go left to right on the top uh, and then work our way through the, the wheels and the trackballs. And then we're gonna finish up here on the right with all these commands. So first up, we have the Y lift, Y gamma, and Y gain. These I think are actually incredibly underused and underappreciated. So I won't go too into depth of when to use that and how to use it, because that's not the point here. But I will say that I think it's incredibly undervalued as a tool. Uh, and also you don't need the panel to do this. You can also just go over here. Uh, and if you just have a mouse and keyboard and you can just you know, click on the Y channel and scrub here. You can also do it in the bars, just clicking and dragging on the Y channel only. So next up, we have the contrast, pivot, and mid-tone detail. These are self-explanatory. They operate same as they would uh, here in the primaries palette. The only difference is you don't actually have to be on the primaries palette to access the tools. If you had either RGB mixer up, you can still use your contrast, pivot, and color boost, or sorry, mid-tone detail. Color boost is coming up next. So that's what's super handy. Um, that's one of the biggest speed increases and, and workflow improvements to having a panel is not having to do so much moving around and, and swapping tabs just to get to the control you need 90% of the time it's just right there in front of you and then if it's not you have quick access to open up whichever tab you need to and that'll be covered in the, the second part of this video which is the top half so moving on we have color boost shadows and highlights again same thing as what's happening in the primary palette obviously you have color boost and then you have the shadows and your highlights and you can just click all of these to reset that's how all these these knobs work you press down on it to reset it and the last three knobs we have here in the bottom half of the mini panel, uh, the micro panel section essentially, is the saturation, hue, and luminance mix. Saturation, of course, increases saturation. Hue pivots the entire hue or rotates it all the way around uh, the axis there. And then the luminance mix, which I won't explain too much about what it does now, um, but essentially it just allows you to operate on one channel, isolate that channel, and work on it independently without having to worry about those changes affecting the red and green channels. All right, so that covers the top row of the controls and the knobs here. So moving on, we have the kind of the life of the party, which is the trackballs and wheels. So the wheels allow you to adjust the exposure of any specific tonal range. And then the trackballs, of course, allow you to push certain color into the different tonal range. And one of the main advantages of having a panel is that you can adjust uh, two tonal regions at the same time. That is something obviously you're very limited on. You can't adjust the gain and the lift at the same time with just mouse and keyboard. But here we can push warmth into the gain and then cool down the lift at the same time and just allows you to, to experiment more and get more and more different results. And then above each trackball and wheel, we have three reset buttons. We have the RGB reset, the reset all, and the reset the level. Next up, we have the log offset and viewer button. Obviously log takes you to log wheels, 
offset allows you to operate the offset by using the far right wheel and that also opens you up to being able to adjust temperature using the wheel furthest to the left if you scroll left it's going to cool it off and, and decrease the temperature and then if you scroll right it's going to increase the temperature and warm things up and then the middle one also adjusts your tint so scrolling left gives you green and then scrolling to the right gives you magenta the trackballs don't actually do anything here it's just the wheels and then lastly you have your viewer button which just pulls up whichever viewer mode you're in uh, it switches to that view mode now next up we have all of these controls here these are also going to be pretty simple uh, we have grab still which is of course going to grab a still same thing as if you were to right click on your image and hit grab still and then we have undo and redo so command z and shift command z and then we have play still which is the exact same thing as clicking this button here in the corner notice nothing actually changes though because the still we're playing is what we just grabbed Next up, we have previous memory, and this bounces between you know, two different memories. And here, it's similar to versions. Um, I still prefer to use versions because there's a little bit more added functionality than using the previous memory. Um, but you know, perhaps if you prefer previous memory over the versions, let me know why in the comments. I'm sure uh, a lot of people would love to know. And then next up, we have the reset button. And then it took me a couple months to actually realize that reset does you know, reset that one node. But if we make a new version and we hold reset, it resets all the, the grades and the nodes. So it gives you kind of a full blank slate. So that's the reset button. If you press it once, it's going to reset that node. And if you press and hold, it's going to reset all your nodes and the grades on that clip. Next up, we have loop. And here you see if we play it and it gets to the end, it's going to loop it back to the beginning of the timeline or the beginning of that clip, sorry. So next up, we have bypass, which turns off all the color adjustments that you've made. And then disable works on a node by node basis. So if we went back to curves, we can disable the curves node. And then we can go using next node and previous node, which are our next buttons uh, that bounces us one node at a time. I wish they would do sort of a hold and it would go to the first node, but it only does one at a time. Um, but they did do that on the previous frame and next frame. So if you press previous frame, it's going to bounce back one frame. But if you hold previous frame, it goes to the head of that clip. And then if you hold next frame, it goes to the tail of the clip. So that's kind of handy if you need to see the beginning and the end. Um, I use that all the time. It's super quick, super helpful, but also one of those things that they don't really tell you about and i didn't know about it first so lastly we have previous clip and next clip and here you can't really see it because i don't have multiple clips in my timeline uh, but this obviously bounces you from one clip to the next no matter where you're at in one clip pressing next clip is going to take you to the first frame of the next clip and then same thing for previous clip and then lastly we have the play reverse which is going to play backwards you can press it again it'll go 2x speed and then 4x all the way up to 16x speed and then of course you can play forward doing the same thing 4x 8x 16x and this button the stop button obviously stops it so that covers the bottom half here the panel the mini panel let's go ahead and take a look at what is available here in the top controls which is really where this panel is unlocked uh, this is what makes it worth the three thousand dollar price tag there's not really much going on in the home button it just shows you the network you're on uh, and then we have your about resolve you can hit about it's going to show you which version the panel is on and what it's connected uh, using obviously i have mine connected usb just below the home button we have the raw tab and this is not a raw clip so it's not going to give us the parameters to adjust here but if it was a raw clip you'd see a lot of raw options to change and you do that using the sliders the dials um, but i actually prefer if it's a drop down menu to just avoid the dials it can be a little finicky in that case i would rather just go over here and then click the drop down and then select whatever i need to select uh, so next up we have primaries and here this is obviously going to take you back to your primaries this has actually become a little bit more useful to me recently because sometimes you know, if i'm moving the uh the trackball around for my lift i can get it pretty close where i want it but then i'm just not quite fine tuning it enough because i can make too many it's too easy for me to make small changes in the direction i don't want to go using the trackball so i can get it close and then i can fine tune it using you know just subtracting more and more red from the lift using this over here and then using the green i can add green so that works pretty well uh, but you notice it only lift and gamma to get to the gain you have to press this arrow key and that's really the unlock of this panel there's so many extra tabs and tools and, and functions you can unlock by adding or going to that second tab and you always know if there's an extra tab there uh, because it's going to have the one or two dots or three dots in some cases underneath the primary function that is highlighted in the screen here so here, if we wanted to go to gain, we press over, which can kind of be a pain, um, but hey, no pain, no gain. That was terrible, I'm so sorry. So yeah, anyways, pulling down, now we're adjusting the gain here, subtracting red. And then of course we have the same function as the Y luminance or the Y gain here, just by adjusting the luminance of the gain. And then you also have access to your log wheels. You have access to your offsets and your RGB mixer. So again, it's just further adding functionality to 
really finesse the controls without having to use a mouse. And that of course is, is what's so vital here because color grading is all about the nuances. And then next up we have motion and here's all of our noise reduction and motion blur controls. Uh, this most, for the most part, I'm still using mouse and keyboard on this section because I don't know, I just feel like I'm still a little bit faster using mouse and keyboard with some settings. Uh, in a lot of instances, the panel is much faster, but in some things I still prefer to just use my mouse. So next up we have curves, and this is exactly what I was talking about, one of those things that I'm much faster with using my curves. Uh, and we have access to, as you see, every single curve here on the chart. And then tools. And the tools, again, this opens up a whole another array of, of things you can do here, things you can finesse and fine tune. And we can gang all the channels, so we're just adjusting them all globally. And then we can make that look terrible, it's awesome. And then we can also uh, ungang the channels, or delink the channels, go into our red curves by tapping that red button there. And now we can make changes just to the red channel. And so that allows you again to be super precise and not just slip and, and you know move something way too far with your mouse. Uh, so here, making these tiny little changes, that's the nuance that I really do enjoy having when using these knobs on the panel. Now let's jump into the hue versus sat, and this will be the same for hue versus sat or any versus curve. This is one of those things that really does speed up my workflow because I can go right into this. I don't have to add any preset points. If I know I need to reduce red and yellow saturation, I can actually just take two fingers and then pull them both down. And it's gonna set anchors on my green and magenta points so that I'm not affecting anything from green over to magenta. I'm only affecting the red and yellow saturation. And then if I wanna reset one, I can just press down on yellow and it resets my yellow. So now my changes have only been applied to the red point. And still, if you wanna fine tune things even more, you can take that red point after adjusting it and then adjust the input hue and now you're moving it along that axis. So you're getting access to both controls, um, which again, more refined than a mouse. Reset this, and now we're going to our qualifier function. This one, this is one of those things that it's, I'm still kind of torn on because you can use the uh, qualifier tool on the panel. It does work just fine, obviously, but I think I still just prefer to use mouse and keyboard in some of these instances. Uh, most of the time with my keys, I just feel like I have more control just making small changes here. Again, it's all the same controls that are listed right beneath the hue, saturation, and luminance. Uh, it's just a different way of interacting with those tools. So next up we have windows and here this is another thing that i do enjoy using the panel for uh, we can do a window on and now we've created that window there we can adjust the size we can just make this put it right over her face just pan this up and rotate it if you need to change the aspect we can make it a little bit taller just to fit a, a face shape and we can be sure to soften it out plenty you can reduce the opacity if you want pan it left a little bit um, and you have access to all the different types of windows here. You can add another window, turn on and off certain windows, start pressing these tabs up top. Um, but then what's, what's super quick for me here is if I've made the window and it's where I want it to be, uh, the next thing I can select is I, I want to track it. So I can just go tracker, track, and that's going to track all the way forward. We can be sure we track it backwards. It's just a lot faster to just go click, click. It's two buttons. Um, so anyways, that's cool. So now we have the blur tool and here again, same exact tools, just a different interaction with them. And then if we wanted to adjust each one independently, uh, we can adjust the, the sharpening of the blur of each color channel uh, right there with the knobs. So that's pretty handy. And then of course you can switch from blur to sharpen to mist and we'll reset that. And next up we have the keyer. So this is a super handy tool because say I, you know, just really push this image, you know, I don't know, what we're doing here, just making it apparent that we've made changes. Um, and I've, I've made some changes to the image, but I wanna take the overall effect of that node's intensity and pull it down. And the keyer tab, I can just go to the key output, the gain, and by reducing the gain, I'm essentially just affecting the opacity uh, and the intensity of that node's effect on the image. So that's a quick way and, and definitely something that I use all the time. Uh, if I wanna reduce the intensity of some global changes I've made, I can just turn down the gain. Or if somebody says, hey, split the difference on, on this look, uh, we can go to that look node and then just turn it down. So next up we have sizing. And this is actually something I need to start using a whole lot more because we can just flip the image with a press of a button or flip it vertically. Uh, we can adjust the input sizing here. We can do the same thing for the reference sizing. If we have a reference like play still pulled up or split screen, uh, we can of course affect the node effects and the output and the edit sizing. So all the sizing controls here, I use this all the time whenever I'm doing shot matching uh, or if I'm matching a reference. Next up we have effects and here you can set your favorite effects to pull up and populate here. But just to show you how quick that can be, you know, if I have, if I'm on primary wheels or whatever, I'm making changes, go to my next node. Uh, if I wanted to add a glow, for example, I can just press effects and then glow and it's gonna automatically bring up the glow effects in the OFX tab. And then I can also adjust all those settings here. And this is what I was talking about with uh, some of these settings 
they're not necessarily built to be operated on the panel. Um, with some of these sliders, I still prefer to use mouse and keyboard. So reset this, and then next up is the user. And this one, it doesn't come in handy a whole lot, uh, but if you're working with the HDR palette, this is the quickest way to get there. User, HDR, there's your HDR palette. And I won't even begin to get into all the controls here of the HDR palette on the mini panel, because you can pretty much adjust and modify every single parameter of the HDR palette here. So that's gonna cover the left side, all of these controls uh, and what they do and how they interact with the screens you're seeing here. Uh, they pretty much allow you to bounce between different pages and tabs of your controls. And then on the right side, it gives you a lot more options for modifying nodes and adding nodes. So on the right side, starting from the top left is our serial node. This is gonna add a serial node. And then next up is parallel. This of course adds a parallel node. And then if we hit layer, obviously adds a layer node. Next up, we have node plus linear. So this one, it adds a node with a linear window. And then node circle adds a node with a circular window. So this is quick and easy. If you know you need to add a vignette, you hit node plus circle, and it's gonna add obviously a node with a circular power window on it. Now next up, we have the append node option. So if we're on node two and we press append, you see it's gonna add that node at the very end of the lineup. And then next up, we have the full viewer, and you can kind of customize how this is laid out, but essentially it's just giving you some controls uh, and giving you a little bit larger display on your GUI monitor of the image you're working on. So next up, we have previous still and next still, and this is super handy if you're trying to you know, balance certain shots based on stills you have grabbed. Uh, and if we were to grab a couple more stills, previous still and next still, as you see over there in the left corner, they are going to uh, modify which still you have selected to, to reference. And this just saves you from having to open up your gallery and then visually click on whichever one you have, wanna have pulled up. Um, here, if you only have a few, it's just quicker to go previous still, next still, and bounce around that way. Next up is the highlight function. And here, if we bounce back a couple of nodes, you'll see we are highlighting just the changes on that specific node. Most of you probably already know how this one works. You can also use Shift H if you're just on a keyboard and it'll do the same thing. Next up, we have previous and next keyframe. And I don't use keyframe a whole lot, but when I do, uh, this is super quick and easy just to bounce back and forth between where they're located. So I know that I'm not adding extra keyframes and making new changes and it just throws everything out of whack. So having just the ability to click next keyframe and then modify the changes made at that next point, uh, super handy. Next up and lastly, we have the reference button and it does not thing. Um, I've looked it up. I can't find anything on it. Uh, if you guys know what the reference button does, let me know. But as you see here, I'm pressing it and nothing's happening. Uh, and one more thing to note about the right side here, all of these buttons are numbered one through 15. And I've got no idea why they're numbered that they seem to have no function either. Uh, maybe it was uh, something they were planning on rolling out, but they never did. So Hey, if you know what it does, let me know in the comments. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to this quick little synopsis review of the Blackmagic Design uh, mini panel for DaVinci Resolve. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to let me know in the comments what other hardware-related topics you want to see covered next here on the channel. Again, don't forget to check out that link down below to get yourself signed up for the free HDR training. It covers a wide variety of topics, and I promise after watching, you'll walk away with tons of little tips and tricks you can apply on your next project. That's gonna do it for me. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.